So today I'm going to be talking to you about equine trailer safety. There are multiple types of horse trailers. The three most common that we see are straight load, slant load, and livestock trailers. These trailers can hold varying amounts of horses, depending on the size, anywhere from 1 to 10 typically. There are two different types of trailer hookups, bumper pulls and goosenecks. A bumper pull, as it sounds, hooks onto the trailer hitch and the bumper of the vehicle, whereas a gooseneck hooks onto a trailer hitch that's up inside the bed of the vehicle. Typically, it's the truck. Um, there are also commercial-grade transport haulers, such as that pictured on the right. This Wells Fargo horse hauler is a commercial-grade transport hauler, which is a semi-rig that hauls a very large trailer and in this case this trailer would be capable of hauling more than 10 horses if needed along with a lot more cargo. So it is important that when we are talking about trailer safety that we are looking at selecting the correct trailer for our needs. When selecting a trailer it's important to look at our reason for hauling such as, are we planning on taking our horses to shows, or do we only need a trailer to run five minutes up the road to the vet's office? Next, we need to look at the number of horses that we will be hauling. Make sure our trailer can accommodate all of our horses. The size of our horses that we're hauling. This trailer pictured to the right would not be able to hold a draft size horse, so we have to make sure that our trailer fits our horses. And then how much tack or equipment is going to be needed to st be stored on the trailer. Sometimes there's not much room in the truck to store tack and equipment, so it would all have to go in the trailer. So you want to make sure you have room for everything that you need to haul. And then you also have to take into consideration the vehicle that's going to be hauling the trailer. Is it a vehicle that's capable of hauling a gooseneck, or is it only capable of hauling a bumper pull? That's important to know, so you can make sure you can select the best trailer for your vehicle. Next we need to make sure we ensure that the trailer is safe to use. This is something that is important to do every single time we get ready to haul our horses. Um, it's important to check the tires, including the spare tire. Make sure that none of them are dry rotted, cracking, and are all at the proper air pressure. If you have to change a tire on the side of the road, you want to make sure that that tire is safe to put on your trailer. Next we want to check the hookup wires. So this will be the wires that go from the trailer to the vehicle. You want to make sure that they are not frayed, not broken, and that there's no electrical wires exposed. Next we want to check the trailer's chains. Make sure they are not rusted or bent. <clears throat> You're going to want to check the trailer doors and the windows. Make sure that everything is latched completely and securely. All the locks work, nothing is bent or broken, and they're all in place. It's also important to check the hinges. Make sure that none of the hinges are going to come rusting off on your ride down the highway. Next, you want to check the interior of the trailer. Make sure that the floor is not rusting or rotting. Even though this trailer specifically has that nice floor mat on it, it looks safe, but if you pull that floor mat up, there's a chance that the boards or the floor under it could have rot or rusted through. In which case, your horse could actually fall through the bottom of your trailer while you're traveling down the road. So it's very important to make sure that you check the true flooring, not just look at the mats. Another way to ensure the integrity of the floor of your horse trailer is to make sure that every time you use it, you clean it out. If there are this feces and urine left in the trailer, even though it would be on that mat, it traps moisture and can actually rot a floor faster in the trailer. So next we also want to make sure that our tie rings are securely fastened to our trailer. Make sure that they're not, the screws aren't backing out and they're not loose. We also want to make sure that the butt bars, gates, dividers are securely locked in place or that they will securely lock in place after we load our horse. You make sure there's no sharp or pointy objects such as any nails, screws, bolts, sticks um, that could injure our horse. Make sure there's nothing sticking out of the pads. 
We don't want our horse to slide their butt sideways and then pale themselves while they're in the trailer. Make sure that if you're using trailer ties that they are not cut or frayed. So when you are hooking up your trailer, you want to raise the trailer high enough that the trailer coupler will pass over the ball hitch on the vehicle, whether that's a bumper pull or gooseneck. Then you're going to back the vehicle up until the ball hitch is directly under the coupler on the trailer and then you'll slowly lower the trailer down onto the vehicle's hitch. After the trailer is completely lowered onto the vehicle's hitch and the jack is off the ground, you're going to lock the trailer coupler onto the vehicle's ball hitch. Most times there is a pin that will slide through a hole on the trailer's coupler after it's locked in place to ensure that it doesn't come unfastened while you're driving down the road. After the trailer is hooked to the vehicle, you want to raise the trailer jack all the way and secure the trailer jack in the upright or hauling position. Next, you want to hook the trailer chains to the vehicle. You do not want to cross the trailer chains when hooking them to the vehicle. If you do cross them and the trailer comes unhooked, from the vehicle and the horses decide to move around because they're unsure of what's going on, they can, along with the crossed chains, can result in flipping your trailer. It's also important to hook the trailer emergency brake cable. A lot of times this is a clip that will hook in the same spot that your trailer chains hooked. So if your trailer does happen to come undone while going down the road, it will engage the emergency brakes and slow your trailer safely. Next, we want to plug in the trailer lights to the vehicle. This is usually a big black cable that plugs into the back of the vehicle. Or if it's a gooseneck, a lot of times the outlet is in the gooseneck um, hitch hole. Next, you want to walk around your trailer and make sure that all the lights are working. Check your turn signals and your brake lights along with the running lights on your trailer. During your walk around, it is also advised to double check all pins that you place or pins that are placed on the trailer. Make sure all those that are used to hook the trailer to the vehicle are latched. And another thing that it is wise to do is to double check the outside of your trailer. Make sure that you don't have any spots rusting or there are no holes in the roof of your trailer. Loading cargo. So one thing you want to do before you load any kind of cargo in your horse trailer, go ahead and check your trailer for wasps and bees. Um, they like to make nests in the trailers because usually they're undisturbed for a while. So the corners and nooks and crannies can make good homes for wasps and bees. So after you do that, then you want to load your cargo. You want to make sure everything's securely strapped in, including your saddles, buckets, hay, all of that. A lot of trailers will have a tack room of sorts with saddle racks or saddle stands in them. These are good places for your saddles. They're very unlikely to fall off the saddle stands that or saddle racks that are in the trailers. We also just want to make sure everything else is put up securely. It'll save your stuff as well as keep weight from shifting around in your trailer while you're driving down the road. So after all that is done we should be ready to load our horses. So when you're loading the horses in a straight load or when you're loading horses in any trailer it is important that the human's exit point is unlocked, open, and easily accessible for the person loading the horse. You don't want to load a horse into a trailer and end up getting trapped between them and your exit point. Your exit point should be readily available to you 
but also should not be too enticing for the horse to try and move all the way through the trailer and out your exit door that they probably won't fit through. So when you're straight loading your horse, you want to place your heaviest horse on the left, which is what it appears is pictured in this picture on the slide. It's important to put the heaviest horse on the left side of your trailer because most roads are sloped to the right for runoff to let water run off the road so that there's no standing water. If we put our heaviest horse on the right and then our trailer tire drops off the side of the road, it's going to A, be much harder to pull the trailer back onto the road and can also increase the chances of flipping your trailer when your heaviest horse is on that side. The slant load trailers you load from front to back. There's not much science behind loading the horses in the slant load trailer as the way the weight is distributed it's not more distributed left or right in this case that we can alter. Thank you for watching my presentation.